Welcome back. In today's lecture we start our discussion about fine tautomata, that is the mechanism and abstraction used behind the regular grammars. The fine tautomata, in fact, is just a fancier name for finite state machines, uh, which are used in many other use cases uh, beyond the regular expressions. And in general a state machine has a set of states and uh, transitions between these states. Right, so it's a graph with nodes and edges. Now let's see how the state machines are related to the regular expressions and uh, used to implement them. Recall from the previous lectures about the formal grammars and BNF notation that a regular grammar always has just one non-terminal at the very right position of the right hand side. And uh, just a reminder that the regular expressions as we know them is just a syntactic notation for regular grammars. Right, so this grammar is equivalent to the following regular expression. Now it turns out that a regular grammar directly corresponds and maps one-to-one -to, -one to the state transitions in a state machine. The starting symbol in the grammar is the starting state, and uh, the starting states are usually denoted with a transition coming from nowhere. The prefix of the right-hand side of the production denotes the transition symbol from the state. In this case it's the actual character B, which we have to consume from a string uh, when we'll be matching a regular expression. And the rightmost symbol of the right hand side is the destination state, where we go into by consuming the character B from the string. The destination state in this case is double circled. Such states are known as acceptance states. What this means, if when traversing this graph we end up in one of the acceptance states, the string is accepted. In the formal grammar, as we see, the acceptance states are denoted as epsilon symbols. And uh, recall from the previous lecture uh, that the epsilon means an empty string. Technically, this means there are no transitions from the state A further and the state is accepting. Alright, so once again, the regular grammars used to describe regular expressions are directly mapped to the state transitions in finite automata. Now let's see the different types of state machines used today in practice and uh, the specific finite automata types used in regular expressions. In general theory, there are two main types of finite automata. These are the machines with output, divided further into Moore and Mealy machines, and uh, the machines without output, divided further into DFA, that is deterministic finite automata, uh, NFA, non-deterministic finite automata, and epsilon NFA, a special subtype of NFA which also allows so-called epsilon transitions, uh, as we'll see shortly. The later three, uh, again DFA, NFA, and epsilon NFA, are exactly used for implementing regular expressions. And uh, since in this class we study specifically state machines used for regular expressions, let's focus on these three machines and uh, see their details. Let's start from the NFA first. The N here stands for non-determinism, as we said. What is non-determinism in this case? It means a such machine allows transitions from one state to multiple other states on the same symbol. In this example, as we see, there are two transitions from the first state uh, to these two states, and both have the same character A on the edge. Practically, this means if we are in the state 1 and we consume character A from the string, we don't know where to go to the state 2 or to the state 3, or maybe to both of them. Running forward, we should say that NFA will choose to go to both of them to consider multiple acceptance paths. So this is exactly the non-determinism uh, when such transitions from one state are allowed. Let's take a look at the epsilon NFA now. First, since this is an NFA, it also allows multiple transitions on the same symbol. In addition to, it also allows the epsilon transitions. So this machine is even less restrictive than the NFA. Now what is the epsilon transition? Such transitions allow us to go from one state to another without consuming any character from a string. Right, so in this case we have to consume character B, uh, or character A here, but in this case we can transit from state 2 to state 4 without consuming any character. Okay, now when we know what NFA and epsilon NFA are, it is simple to define what a DFA is. A DFA basically forbids what we are allowed in the NFA and epsilon NFA. Specifically, it forbids multiple transitions on the same character, and epsilon transitions are also not allowed. So, uh, these transitions are illegal. If we consume a character A, we must be sure we transit to a known state. And to transit from state to state, 
we always have to consume a character from a string. And that's exactly what determinism means in this case. So it seems like the DFA is the most predictable machine. So why do we need and have these three types of defining automata? It turns out it's much easier to transform a regular expression to epsilon NFA first, and then eventually convert this epsilon NFA to DFA, which at runtime will be much faster to execute. And now when we know which specific state machines we'll be using for implementing regular expressions, let's finally give a formal definition of a finite automata uh, or a state machine. A state machine, uh, and I used uh, NFA here, is a tuple of five elements, Q, sigma, delta, Q0, and F. Right, with this, uh, Q is the set of all possible states. Uh, sigma is the alphabet. And recall what is alphabet from the previous lecture. It's all characters which can be used in our strings. Uh, delta is the transition function. For NFA, the transition function looks as Q times sigma goes to 2 in power of Q. What this means is, if we are in some state Q, and we consume a character from the alphabet sigma, we can transit to multiple destination states due to non-determinism. In this case, it's 2 in power of Q transitions. In our regular expression implementation, transition function won't be essential, uh, but we just mention it here as a component from the theoretical definition of a state machine. Q0 is the starting state, that is, the state we start our analysis from. And uh, the F is the set of accepted states. Recall those states are double circled, and uh, if after state transitions we end up in one of the accepted states, uh, we accept the string. And to reiterate on the non-determinism specifically, uh, these are multiple transitions on the same character, and uh, epsilon transitions in case of an epsilon NFA. Okay, now we are ready for the first assignment. The first abstraction you're going to build is the finite automata state. Let's take a look at this example. So we represent a state as a class. Looking at this example state machine, we see that a state can either be accepting or not. So let's accept it as a parameter. Uh, next, we also see that a state has set of edges or transitions to other states. Since each transition has a label, let's store the transition as a map from a symbol to the set of destination states. Okay, so your assignment is to complete this implementation and uh, test it on the following examples. Here we create two states S1 and S2, and then add a transition from the state 1 to the state 2 on the character A. And when we get the transitions on the character A, the method should return an array containing only one state S2. Okay, here is the small summary of today's lecture. Let's take a look. As we said, the regular grammars directly correspond to the state machines. For regular expressions specifically, we use NFAs, epsilon NFAs, and DFAs. And again, uh, the conversion pipeline will be as we convert a regular expression to an epsilon NFA, and then after a set of transformations to a DFA, eventually obtaining a transition table. The DFA, as we remember, doesn't allow epsilon transitions and uh, can only have one transition for a character. And uh, in formal definition, a state machine or a finite automaton is a tuple of five elements, which are the sets of all states, alphabet, transition function, starting state, and the set of accepting states. Okay, now when we know the generic definition of NFAs and DFAs, we can start looking at the basic NFA fragments, uh, which we use to construct a regular expression machine, and uh, which we'll be discussing in the next video.